Hi, so um, really excited to be here talking with all of you. My name is Lisa Federer. I'm the data science and open science librarian. Um, and we'll be talking with my colleague who I'll turn it over to. Hello, I am Miriam Zeringham. I am a data science and open science specialist uh, here at the National Library of Medicine. And today we wanted to uh, share with you some lessons learned during uh, two workshops that we hosted here at NLM, uh, hands-on workshops uh, around reproducibility in bioinformatics. And the, uh, the workshops were sort of um, inspired by a little thought experiment. Uh, which was inspired by um, my experience uh, in grad school. So uh, full disclosure, I am not a librarian. I was trained as a uh, biomedical researcher. And um, during the course of uh, my grad school research, I was scooped a whopping five times. And um, I thought, well, you know, I have these five studies that claim to um, show the same thing. So what happens if I dig into their data, dig into their methods, and try to reproduce what they did? And so my PhD wound up being sort of a uh, meta reproducibility study. And I learned a lot about how um, reproducibility operates sort of from a more hands-on um, perspective. And so when I came to, uh, to the NLM, I thought it would be interesting to see what we could learn by having um, NIH researchers come together and try to um, reproduce papers from the bioinformatics literature uh, over the course of a few days. And so we brought together um, in, in the course of two workshops that we ran here at the NIH, um, 25 researchers um, to, again, reproduce papers from the bioinformatics literature. And the goal was uh, for them sort of threefold. Um, first, we wanted them to um, learn some of the practical tools that can help uh, facilitate reproducible research practices and also expose them to some of the resources that we have here at NLM um, around bioinformatics specifically. So um, the databases that we house as well as some of the tools that we house. Uh, two, we wanted them to um, understand how they might incorporate some of these tools into their everyday uh, research practices. And uh, three, we wanted them to, by the end of the three days, and this was kind of an ambitious goal, we wanted them to have some sort of path towards a deliverable in the form of an executable notebook or a preprint publication that said whether or not they were actually able to reproduce the paper um, that they set out to reproduce. I will be saying reproduce a lot, I guess, in the next, uh, in our 10 minutes together. Um, and at the same time, uh, we wanted to observe how they were um, tackling the challenge of trying to reproduce these papers um, to help us think about how we might develop a curriculum around promoting reproducible research practices um, for researchers. We wanted to also see how they were actually approaching reproducibility from a hands-on perspective. What were some of the hurdles that they were, or challenges that they were coming up against um, as they were trying to sort of dig through the data, as they were trying to re-engineer um, the methods that were used uh, for those papers. And by observing them, uh, we wanted to see whether there were some low-hanging fruit um, that we could address uh, here at NLM or you know, on the publisher's side or just within the research community um, to promote reproducible research practices. And so the structure um, of the workshop, uh, of both workshops, were um, they were three-day workshops for 25 intramural NIH researchers. Um, we had the researchers, we put out a general announcement um, to the NIH researchers um, to have people apply to actually participate in the workshop. And for both rounds, we had about 50 people applying. So there's a lot, there was a lot of interest, um, even with sort of minimal advertising. And we split those 25 researchers into five teams um, to reproduce a particular bioinformatics paper. And we didn't just pick papers sort of willy-nilly. Uh, we made sure that the underlying data were available in NLM-hosted repositories. Um, and that there uh, that we could actually you know find 
uh, that there was some sort of accession number uh, associated with the paper. Um, on the first day of the workshop, uh, we had, it was a little bit more didactic. So um, we had uh, some instructors here at the NIH volunteer um, to give 30-minute uh, tutorials on executable notebooks, um, focusing specifically on Jupyter, um, on version control using Git and GitHub, and on containerization um, using Docker. And we kicked off the first day with an hour-long primer on open science and reproducibility to sort of set the tone and the motivation for what this workshop was all about. And then on the second and third days, uh, the teams worked together in groups in a codathon uh, sort of format, trying to um, collaboratively uh, reproduce these papers. And then at the end of those uh, three days, they shared out their progress. Um, and so now I'm going to turn it over to Lisa to share with you uh, what we learned. Thank you. So um, I would say what we learned is probably not going to be a surprise to anyone here that reproducibility is very difficult. Um, out of 10 teams over the course of these two workshops, not a single team could reproduce one of these papers. And these were papers that, as Miriam said, we, you know, we were careful to choose papers that had their data available. Uh, had their code available and to be honest when we started this I was worried um, like oh this will be too easy they'll just get the code and get the data and run it on day one and that'll be the end what will they do for three days and that really did not turn out to be the case um, so I approached this uh, these two workshops as sort of an opportunity to put on my qualitative researcher hat and do sort of a mini ethnographic study um, actually sitting with the teams and you know figuring out what their you know sort of um, roadblocks were to reproducibility and, and you know thinking about how they were approaching these problems and hearing some of the things that they had to say um, the quote on our title slide about taking a stab in the dark is something that uh, one of the teams described as their process like <laughs> everything was so poorly documented that it was sort of like Meh, I don't know um, so some of the things that we found um, as common issues across several of the papers that we looked at um, was that a lot of them were missing underlying data. So even if they said um, that the data were supposed to be available, that wasn't always necessarily the, necessarily the case. Um, there were papers that said that the data was available in a supplement and there was no supplement. Um, there were other times where there was quite a lot of data available, but it was really hard to figure out which data set went with which particular analysis. Um, there were cases where like there was raw data but not the process data that they needed. Um, so the, the data piece was uh, very challenging. Um, another piece is missing software and tools. So um, this could be things that you know we developed an in-house a program and ran it and that code is not available so you know obviously that cannot be reproduced um, or you know just other sort of pieces of software and tools that were not made available even when those tools were things that were available in many cases there were just inadequate descriptions of the software and tools that were used um, in in the paper itself so things like saying that they used um, a particular script but not giving information about the parameters with which it was run or um, you know things like that um, another issue was that workflows in terms of um, you know sort of the overarching workflow for running the code was inadequately described or difficult to follow um, there was one team that this I was just like blown away by this this paper had 80 different scripts um, there was no description of what each of the scripts was supposed to do or how they were supposed to work together or what part of what they were doing. They also didn't say which particular data set was the input for that tool or um, particular script. So while the researchers had made really a lot of information available, it was in practice not really usable at all. Um, so I think one of the things that really emerged from this was that there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of raising the minimum standard for peer review to make sure that when these papers get out there um, that you know these problems that we identified don't happen um, one is making sure that the underlying raw data are made readily available uh, is there actually a supplement there are the data sets at the um, you know location where the authors say they are it's a quick 
track that um, would be easy to do and you know would obviously go a long way in improving data availability. Um, and then the description in the methods section of software and tools really needs to have adequate information like the appropriate version. What version did you use of this code? Um, what were the parameters that you ran it with? So having enough information that uh, you know, a person could theoretically pick this up and, and run with it. Um, and then the underlying analysis tools are made readily available. So if you do have those, you know, in-house custom scripts, that those are published somewhere so that somebody else would be able to see them. Um, I think it was definitely for me a very eye-opening experience. And I think many of the participants in this workshop felt the same in thinking about like, oh my gosh, of the papers that I've published, have I done all of this? Um, and so it was very, in, uh, in the papers that I've written subsequently, I have been very, very careful about documenting versions of uh, software specifically. So I think, um, you know, for the people that attended this, I think we will all be doing our own science differently going forward. Um, so I would also point out that there's still many different ways to interpret reproducibility that sort of influence what we would hope to expect in the literature. Um, so for example, do we want the raw data or the process data? Which of those things do we need? Um, are we able to reuse scripts or have to reverse engineer them? Um, there were teams that basically were not able to find the script or couldn't use the script. So they were like, well, this is kind of what they describe it doing. So can we build something that would be like that? Um, and then figuring out how to recreate computing environments um, versus using an environment that's close enough. Do we have to have the exact same um, system that a person was using uh, to do this analysis originally, or will other similar computing environments work? Um, and then regenerating the figures versus regenerating the general conclusions. There were some teams that, although they were not able to actually reproduce the paper itself, they were able to like make one of the figures, which I mean, it's again, kind of interesting that they had three days and the only thing they could do was figure out how to make one figure out of a whole paper. Um, but, you know, figuring out what are the sort of pieces of reproducibility that we need to think about. Um, I will say that there were some bright spots here in terms of communication um, for open science. And uh, that was that some of the teams actually did reach out to the corresponding authors for the data or with questions about the methods. Um, so basically the things that they couldn't figure out, they, they reached out to the corresponding authors. And the authors actually did respond, um, some of them like within hours. And so I think what this shows is that it's not that these authors are acting in bad faith and they um, you know, don't want people to reproduce their papers. I think that um, it's more just a matter of they're not aware that um, some of these issues exist with their papers. Um, I think you know, it might have something to do with the fact that the people who were emailing them were people from the NIH. I don't know that everybody would get that same quick response, um, but I was really impressed with um, the extent to which the authors were really willing and happy to work with the people um, who uh, were trying to reproduce their papers. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. I think we're uh, holding questions till the end, um, but thank you all for the opportunity to chat with you about this today.